So I get this question asked a lot, what plugins do I recommend getting on the MPC and standalone? So here are my top five plugins in 2024. But keep in mind, there's really not many options to choose from either. So I'm just giving you the main ones that I come across in my workflow. For the first plugin, I'm gonna have to give it up to Flexbeat, which is like the growth speed of FL on the MPC. And this is where you're gonna get a lot of these glitches effects to just spice up your melodies. So let's just hear it with Flexbeat off. And this is more than one instance of Flexbeat too. So if you see, I could go to my drums and I have it on my snare and then I have it on the open hat. I also have it on the instruments like the pads, the pianos. So what I really like about this plugin is the presets. So as you can see at the top, you could just click and just have different ones. Bonus one, I feel like you go and really get that FL fill where you have the vinyl stop or the vinyl off and even the half speed. That's hard. And you see how this switched to the other effect because I also have it automated. So if I go to main, go to my grid view and then go to automations, just click into here. You could automate your flex beats, bro. But a couple caveats when you're in standalone, it doesn't re-trigger. And this kind of goes into the second thing because since you can't re-trigger, you can draw out your automation, but without the re-trigger, it kind of defeats the purpose in a sense. But you know, for me in this beat, I was able to work with what I have. So for instance, with the piano, the effect is coming at the end of the bar, just like how I want it. So you will have those instances like that and you can still do a lot more. And honestly, this plugin is really just a step up from XY effects because sometimes XY effects could get annoying because you can't record it on the master output. This is give you more flexibility to put it on all your sounds, including a master channel. And the price on this is $79. Now for the second plugin, this is like the only plugin where you're gonna really have all your sounds and just want to plug in and that is Fabric XL collection. And the reason why I recommend this is because for those that just really want to play from scratch and you're just looking for that one plugin that you could just go to all the time, this will be it. And it got some dope sounds in it too. Let's just switch out the preset. Mm, that's hard. And that's just in the pads section. And you can see from the presets, you have all these different kinds of sounds, awakening, pianos, keyboards, electronic pianos, strings. And this is different from getting like the stage piano and the electric piano separate. You can do it that way, but if you're really serious about just making your beats from scratch and you just wanna have a bundle all together so you don't have to just buy individuals, I would definitely say go this route. But just so you aware, this plugin is not on the cheap side. This plugin is like the Omni Spare of the MPC. So this is going for and another caveat to add to that is that you're gonna have a biased opinion if you already coming from a DAW or have been using sounds outside the MPC. Your mind is subconsciously gonna to try to compare it to what you heard before, and it's just not gonna be that. For those that's coming from a DAW, these are the people that's gonna say, nah, it doesn't have the best quality sounds. Now, trust me, that's what I thought in the beginning too, but since I only use standalone, and I, I just kinda of like push myself to this work with what I have, then I start to get back into that kind of beginner mindset where it's like when you're a beginner, you don't know what is good and what's bad. So you're really being creative with what you have. And that's like the kind of mindset that I tapped back into. This is not about like acceptance, like, oh, I'm accepting the low quality and just gonna work with the low quality. This is more so like, since you don't know what's better, your mind is not even being biased and it's not being judgmental. So it gives you more room to be creative. And at the same time, when I listen back, the sounds are actually quality, especially when you can add effects and do your own mixing to it. Yeah, so if you want more info, you can just check on their website. And for all the play plugins, I'm gonna have a link in the description that you can go check out for more info. And for number three, I gotta give it to Subfactory, hands down the best plugin for 808s and bass. And yeah, there's really not that much to choose from. You do have baseline, and you can use the MIDI D to make some. But with Subfactory, it just comes in clutch because instead of using the 808 like I did for this beat,
That sounds nice, but the steps I had to take to load this 808, first you gotta go to the browser menu, find the 808 that you like, and once you do, then you gotta go to pad perform, put it on mono because you don't want it on polyphonic or it's gonna overlap. Then you wanna switch it to one shot. I mean, that's more of a preference thing. If you wanna play it where you have to hold down onto it and then you can control the duration that way, then that's probably your workflow. But for me, I at least like to start my 808s in one shot so I could just hit it like this. It's just a lot more fun that way. So then once you do that, hopefully your 808 is actually tuned to the root note of C, because if it's not, if I go here and then go to the second screen, you can see that's tuned to E. So I had to tune it back down four notes to get back to the root note of C. I could have just changed it from here too. But the point is that's already four steps already that I had to do. And the fifth step will be to put it in key versus if I just use Subfactory, which is a plugin, I could just go to Subfactory and I could just go to the presets of the 808s. And I feel like this plugin is really geared towards the 808s. So for those that like to make trap and hip hop, this is definitely for us. So I could even go through the presets. I don't have to tune it. Everything is already kind of starting on the root note of C and all I have to do is just play in key and I can control the duration just by how I play it. And most of the 808s is going to be one shot anyways. And then if you go to the sample feature, you have this clip feature where you could just make it hit harder. There's just a lot that you can do with this plugin from having these two oscillators and then your sample. The only drawback I would say is that you can't load in your own samples. But I wouldn't say that's a drawback because actually you could go in and then they give you like a sample list of kicks that you can choose from, 808 loops that you can choose from, and noises. Pretty much I feel like they got enough presets that will come close to the sample that you was trying to load yourself. Whether it was like, oh, you wanted to layer a kick, they already have a kick, or if you wanted some noise, they already have some noise effects. So I'm not really too crazy about that. And this is going for $79. And if you want a more in-depth video going over most of the functions in Subfactory, then I have that video link in the description as well. And while we're on Subfactory and talking about how we can make the 808s hit harder just using the clip, then it goes into the next plugin, number four, and that is Soft Clipper. And I think this plugin is very cool for drums and 808s. Let me show you how I would originally make my kicks and my snare and hi-hat hit harder. I would just go to menu pad 14, go to effects, hit effects again, and then you get to this like hidden kind of effect screen. But I would just use the Soft Clipper from here. So I could just hit the pad and it would just play. the hi-hat. But now they got the plugin version, so I'm all about convenience and ease of workflow. So let me just show you in context. So let's go to mix. Since my samples and drums are all on this one program, I gotta put my drums in the sub mix. So you can just do that by clicking on your drum sounds. Go up to here, go to where it says program, go to sub one. Sub so one. So this is just a way for you to route your sounds into one bus. And then you can just press mix again so you can get back to the main mixer screen. Go to your sub mixes and go to sub mix one. This is where all our drums are. And it's actually going to be in the harmonic section. Air soft clipper. And this is how it sounds. So that's cool, you can hear that it has all these different kind of effects that you can go from and the presets as well. You know, it has parallel, it has light soft clipping and it also got tons of features that you can just mess around with that I haven't really got around to and I think it's set at a good price which is $20 right now. And for the Fit Play plugin, I'm gonna have to give it up to Jura because it's that certain sound, you know, the 80s synth sound. 
and that's what I like. And if you are into that kind of sound, then you're going to find this plugin useful. Now, for those that, you know, don't really be making those kind of beats all the times, the only drawback is that you'll probably just have it laying around and only use it time to time. But either way, we're going to end up prioritizing our plugins from what we use most and what we use less. But it doesn't necessarily mean one is better than the other, it's just for what is being used for certain cases. And for this beat, it sounds something like this. You know, smooth sounds that I got from here. So yeah, if you want that nice chill vibes. Mm. And if you're a fan of sound designing, you still have these features as well. And you know, I'm a big preset guy and they got many presets, bro. So they definitely went good on this. A lot of people may have their mixed opinions about this, but honestly, how can you have mixed opinions about the only plugin that can do this in standalone? So this is the whole thing when it comes to standalone. Yes, there's other paid plugins that you could probably choose from, but these are the ones that I feel like you're probably gonna get the most out of. Now I do know the price is a bit hefty for these plugins. Now before you feel like, damn man, forget Akai, blah, 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 and then start jumping in the pool of all the negative people and the naysayers, don't do all of that, bro. Instead of wasting your time, just ask yourself, what are you trying to achieve? And by answering that, then you start to see the value in this because yeah, it may cost a lot, but you can't just only judge things by the price. You gotta see if it gives you what you want, you're gonna get the most out of it thinking this way. So for me, the way I would think about getting plugins is that you know, when I first got on MPC, I only wanted to use it in standalone. And I understood that meant, you know, if not having the software, I can't use the VSTs that I like and all that. But I'm like, all right, cool. I'll still make do with what I have because I like the portability, being able to go anywhere and just cook up. And if that is you, and you just wanna still have like a good sound bank to go to, you can buy expansions and all that stuff. That might be the cheaper route. But if you do have money to spend, I would say these are it and also link is in the description. These are affiliate links, but it does help support the channel with no additional cost.